Hey everyone, Dorothy Reitzman here with Dreamcatchers. Today I have my beautiful model Kenzie and we're going to be doing a full head application of tape and extensions. What I'm doing right now is Mackenzie has really dense hair and she has some structure into her hair. So what I'm doing is I'm carving out to remove that density to allow the tape ends to blend more properly and also removing the structured lines, making them more vertical and shattered so it seamlessly blends throughout her extensions. So now I've completed the carving part of prepping her hair to install her extensions. I did smooth it down because when you're installing extensions, you want it to be as smooth and clean as possible. You want it to be clean, especially when you're installing the tape and extensions because technically the tape ends are a type of adhesive. If you have any oils or excess product on the hair, it may not allow your tape ends to adhere properly and or they'll fall out quicker than they would if it was a clean slate to start with. So she has clean straight hair now, we've smoothed it out out, but I've also carved through so you can see how much just density she's got extremely dense hair so I released that density because I am going to be adding multiple packs of extensions to her hair but I've also shattered her lines because she had very structured lines like you saw earlier today so what you see here is it's definitely more compact it's shattered all the way through definitely on the outline and I removed that weight all the way through every part of her hair so now I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to install her first pack All right, so now what I'm doing right through here with Mackenzie is I'm just sectioning off from the top of the crown to behind the ear on both of my front sections. The reason I do this is because I'm not gonna get to these areas till at least my third or fourth row. So instead of trying to tackle everything and clip it up all in one and having like 15 clips in the hair on the top with a weird bun, I'm just sectioning them off, taking them out of the way, and it mentally organizes myself that I need to approach those at a different standpoint. When I'm starting here in the back, I'm gonna be starting in the nape section working my way up. So again, it's gonna be about my third, possibly fourth row uh, before I even start to transition to those sides. Once I get to that area, I will then start to section off the front sections as I'm going forward. So I'm working in three quadrants around the head. So right now, I'm going to be starting with a horizontal section in the nape. You only wanna leave enough hair underneath to where when she pulls her hair up, you're not gonna see it. Depending on the density and texture of your client, it's gonna vary on exactly how much you leave but a good rule of thumb is about a half of an inch to an inch. You can always leave out around any part of your hairline, anywhere around the head to help cover those extensions so they're not noticeable when your client's wearing them on the daily. All right, so with Mackenzie's hair, I'm just about to put in her first row of her tape ins So just a couple of things you wanna take into consideration. Tape ins are a little bit less forgiving than something like an eye tip. Eye tips, you can easily open them up, remove them and do what you need to do. Tape ins are a little bit less forgiving because they're sticking together and it's a little bit more difficult to remove them. So you wanna be more precise with your application as you're going because you can't just take them off and redo them very quickly. Um, they're a lot quicker to do than some other extensions because more of the maintenance is where you're gonna get that time consuming application with your tape ins. When you're originally putting them in, it's gonna go very quickly, especially if you've prepped them how they're supposed to be prepped. So what I've done with Mackenzie, again, you guys saw that she was nice and smooth. I've just clipped her hair up and I've taken my Velcro flyaway strips and I've pasted through to make sure her flyaways are out of the way because you don't want any crosshairs. Crosshairs are going to be very annoying for your client because it's just one single hair that's getting pulled rather than like a whole group of hair. And that one single hair is gonna hurt and be more irritating than anything else. So as I get my first uh, section going through here, we're working on the horizontal. When you're working with tape ins, they're a little bit more of a weft. So you're getting a horizontal distribution of weight versus maybe like an eye tip that is a vertical distribution of weight. So this is going to build your weight a lot quicker than what an eye tip would. You don't have as much variation within your dimension. With Mackenzie, I am gonna be working with four different colors and I will show you guys how to create that dimension as you're going up through the head. So right now, you wanna make sure when you're starting through here, you leave sections off of the hairline here. So when I pull up Mackenzie's hair, you'll notice I have enough hair underneath. So if she pulls her hair up, you're not going to see it. 
also away from the side hairline. So remember when I said a half of an inch to an inch around any hairline? In this nape section, I'm working with three different hairlines. So let me re-show you. I'm working with this bottom nape hairline through here, but I'm also working within your side hairlines along the neck. So any hairline, just take into consideration, it's literally any hairline around the head. So half of an inch to an inch on the underneath, and then also one to two fingers, which is a half of an inch to an inch away from your sides as well. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and install my first tape in. Using your tail comb for nice, clean, precise sections is gonna make your end result very easy, very quick, and very fast to do. So I'm going to take my first slice, when you're taking your slice for your tape-ins, um, those of us who are colorists, it's easy to refer to like a slice for a highlight. You want it very thin to where you can see through it. If it gets too thick, it's not gonna allow your tape-ins to adhere close enough to each other, so the longevity might not be there. There's too much space in between. So, if you're not a colorist, if you're just an extensionist or a hair cutter getting into, or styler getting into extensions, you want it to be very, very thin to where you can see through it. So if you put your hand, your phone, text message, TikTok, something like that underneath it, you're gonna be able to see it. It's just gonna be a small variation in front of it. So you're just taking a very, very thin section. If you're using your Dreamcatcher tail comb, it's a great reference on how much hair needs to go into it. Otherwise, it's about an inch that you can put into your subsection of your tape-in. But I'm taking my Dreamcatcher styling comb and I'm just gonna place it right through here and I can see I need to dwindle down either side to make sure I'm not overpowering my tape-in. So I'm gonna take it away for sure from my outside here because I wanna make sure I have enough hair to cover over top and I'm gonna take it away from this center piece a little bit as well. So now, double check, I've got the size of my section the exact same size as my comb. Again, it's about an inch. I'm holding my hair nice and tight. You wanna have that tension. You always wanna work with clean, consistent tension throughout any application, whether it's extensions or hair in general. It's always gonna make each application you're doing the most precise, clean that you can get. So now, I'm going to grab my tape in I have taken the tape off of the extension. When you receive your extensions, they're gonna have a little blue or white tab onto it. You wanna take this off and prep them before you do your install. It's gonna make it a lot quicker as you're going rather than having to take it and untap it as you go. Be sure when you're using your tape-ins, you're trying not to touch it with your fingers a whole lot on top of the tape. Your fingers have oils and things like that on top of it, especially if you've used any product. Um, speaking with that product, you want to have very little to no product on your client's hair in general, especially oils and hairsprays. Reason being, oils and hairsprays is actually what helps remove the extensions. The hairspray has alcohol and oil obviously has that oil residue and it's going to break down your adhesive. So very little to no product when you have your client coming in and you're installing or even using extensions in general with your tape-ins. So not touching your tape right through here. You wanna grab just below, and you also wanna grab on the corner. Try not to grab in the centers of your tape, as when you go to install it, you're gonna be trying to like do all these weird motions. It's not gonna work very well. So go ahead and just grab the corner section of your tape in, holding that firm tension. As I lift it up, you're gonna see there's a section right through here. I'm not placing my tape directly on top of that section or else it's gonna to be too tight onto the client's scalp and it's going to irritate their scalp. It's not gonna have any type of movement. So when you take it, you wanna put it at the bottom of your section. So not at the parting, just right at the bottom of your parting. So that way you have enough give once you lay the hair down to where it's gonna give and actually have some movement. So I'm just gonna lift it up so you guys can see and I'm going to pull it straight down right through here. Once you have it in the area that you want it, go ahead and take your tail comb and you can just press on top of it. This is just because it's a metal tail comb, no oils or anything like that, and now I can set my hands free to do whatever I need to do. But I do want to take a little second to show you guys, each side I've left a small tab open that has no hair to it. The reason for this is I'm gonna take my second tape in, I'm going to sandwich it directly on top, completely flush. So what's gonna happen is this open tape on either side is gonna to stick to the open tape on the top of the sandwich that I'm putting onto it. 
Technically, right through here, you have hair. So the hair, yes, even though it's very thin, but it is still doing a diffusion of your two tapes sticking together. So it is gonna stick in between where those little hairs are thin enough to allow it to attach, but these corner tabs are gonna allow it to have the longevity of the six to 10 weeks that your client's gonna wear it out. So now as I grab my next one, let me spin her back just a smidge. So again, holding below, and you're going to get exactly flush with your tape in right through here. Again, try not to press through it really quickly because if you need to remove or adjust for any reason, it's not fully adhered just yet. But I think it's just about perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead, take my fingers, and I'm just going to press it together. By taking your fingers and pressing it together, your fingers do have a little bit of body heat. That's the only amount of heat that you need when you're installing your extensions. With Dreamcatchers, you don't need to flat iron it or do anything like that for the tapes to adhere to each other. Just pressing it together, your body heat, and you can slightly mold it to go with the client's head. Once I've done that, you'll notice I've got that little bit of give right through here. I can take it, pull the hair straight up, pull the hair straight down a very clean, precise section. Now what I'm going to do is apply her second tape in through here. One thing you always wanna remember when you're applying your tape in extensions is you need to leave a little bit of space in between each one. A good rule of thumb, a minimum side pinky. So if you take your pinky, turn it to the side, that's the minimum amount of space that you wanna add in between your tapes so that they don't mesh together. If you have other areas on the head or less hair that you're applying, you can space it up however much you need to. But full head extension all the way through, minimum side pinky to create that space. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take this one right through here, side pinky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to automatically take that little bit out. Again, I'm going to take my slice. Even though I sliced all the way through, I'm then going to resize my section. Take it through here. You wanna make sure your section is nice and thin. You don't want that over direction coming from underneath. You don't want your section too thick so that you can allow that ad adhering to happen with your extensions. I got my size. She looks good right through here. So now hold my tension nice and clean. I'm going to take my tape. I'm going to hold it here. I'm going to press down, smooth it out. You see my open space going through. Flush, right there. She looks good, I like it. I'm gonna press it through, and now we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and continue up through the head with each row. All right, I've just completed my second row, but I wanted to point something out on this row. You always want to bricklay your tape ends because if you don't, you'll have gaps of hair in between that have no extensions to it. So whenever you're working with tape in extensions, you always wanna bricklay. So what I've done is my first two tape ends underneath on row number one are, let me show you, right through here. So tape number one, tape number two. So now on my next section, I needed to bricklay it. But if I was to do just two tape ins, it wouldn't have been enough. So what, what Dream Characters has is we have a double mesh netting tape on top of our tape and extensions. And what that means is you can cut it and the hair is not gonna shed out because it's a double mesh netting, not a single mesh netting, which a lot of other extension companies out there have. So ours is double mesh. So what I've done is I've applied a full extension right through here. I cut an extension in half and I applied just a baby half one in the middle to help compensate for that middle section that I was lacking prior to. And then I applied my second one through here. Again, I took a side pinky space in between each one to allow that diffusion through. Also within your sections, with Mackenzie, she has again a lot of hair, so I'm going to be applying lots of bundles to her hair. Approximately seven, seven and a half. I'll have to see how many I can fit through her head. But she's trying to get that long density, and so I want to mirror and match the density that she naturally has. So with that being said, you always need to leave space in between each row. Depending on how much hair you're adding to the head is going to depend on how much hair you leave in between. Good rule of thumb is at least one finger space in between. 
Now, if you're doing more of just an average head, which is about four to five bundles, two finger spaces in between is just enough. But with Mackenzie, she's got lots of hair. We're trying to make a dramatic end result. So I'm just leaving one single finger in between right through here so her tape ends aren't gonna combine together. I'm gonna continue doing this up through the head. All tape ends are always placed on the horizontal. So each row as I go up, I'm going to place them horizontally. Once I get to the sides, I'll start to demonstrate for you guys exactly what I'm doing in the front and what might be different than what I did in the back. I'm about 60% of the way through Mackenzie's application, so I just want to point out a couple of things, especially because I'm on the sides now. So I've already installed her first row of her tape ends through here. The same thing that I'm doing in the back, I'm staying horizontal along the sides. A couple of pointers that you want to take into consideration when working with the front. This is where people are definitely going to notice when they pull their hair back. So you want to leave one to two finger space away from that front hairline. It really depends on the client's texture. If they've got a coarser texture, you can get closer to that front hairline because their hairs are a little bit fatter and are gonna be able to cover that um, extension. If they've got the finer hair, the hairs are a little bit skinnier and aren't dense enough or thick enough to actually fully cover. So the finer the hair, the further away from that hairline you wanna go, the coarser the texture you can scoot closer to. She's got that medium to coarse texture, so I'm able to get a little bit closer towards her face. Always good, good rule of thumb, one to two fingers away from her, their front hairline to stay away from. Also remember, when you're working with different hairlines, not, everybody want, not every one person is the exact same. So sometimes their front hairlines come really far forward and sometimes they recede really far back. So even on section maybe number one, you can get closer to that front hairline, but section number two, you might have to scoot it back just depending on how their hairline is falling. So with Mackenzie, I wanna make sure I'm nice and bright around the face, but also as I'm installing, right in this transition part of the head, it's called the mastoid process. It's the area from the side to the back that's happening. You have that bone right through here. You'll notice that she's a little bit weaker in this area. So I wanna make sure that I definitely put a tape and extension right through here, which is brick laying it over her last extensions through here. So I really need to put it right in the middle, smack dab of that, right at her mastoid process. So with that being said, I can't put one full sandwich right here in the front or else I'm not gonna have enough room to hit that center part right there. So right in this front area, I have cut my extension in half again, really utilizing that double mesh netting that Dreamcatchers offers. So I'm going to be placing a cut sandwich right here and then another sandwich right through here. So let me go ahead and spin her really quickly and get my application going. Taking a horizontal section. Now, since I have that little baby sandwich, I can't utilize my comb as a good reference. So this is really something that you want to be very cautious of and very aware of the size sectioning that you're installing because you still want to leave a little bit of space on either side so that you can still allow that adherent, adhesion of the tape ends to go together. So I'm just gonna tape it. I'm not going to completely adhere it. I'm just gonna place it over the top just to gauge my section. So I'm gonna give it back really quickly because I want to slim it down just a little bit. Again, making sure that any one of those crosshairs are out of the way. Some stylists might say use a little bit of hairspray to help tie down or lay down those stray frizzy hairs. The reason you don't want to do this with especially the tape ends, um, hairspray has alcohol to it. Alcohol is actually one of the number one ingredients to break down the adhesive to pull the extensions out. So if you hairspray the hair and then put the tapes on top of it, you're literally sandwiching hairspray in between your two tape ends. You're not going to have a great end result in the end. So I've gauged it. I like it. So I'm going to place it down, pulling it straight down with that tension, pressing it there, grabbing my next tape and I'm just going to press it directly on top, putting it through there. I got my little baby. It's one, technically one tape in, but I cut it in half, so I actually get a full sandwich. This is gonna give her that nice brightness, kind of that money piece right around the front. So now I'm gonna go over, leaving that space in between and knowing exactly where I wanna target that next tape. 
right here sandwiched. Get those baby hairs out of the way. Lift it up, put it at the bottom, pull down. That little piece fell out of my way, so I'm just gonna hold it out of my way, taking my tape, making it nice and flush right through here. Once I know that sandwich is good, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that hair. Again, making sure it's nice and precise. Now, as you see right in that mastered process, I've now filled out that density towards the bottom so she's not lacking in this area. So I'm just gonna keep continuing around the head doing the exact same thing. So I've just finished Mackenzie's full installation of her tape and extensions. I've already established a little bit of length, but I'm going to take it up just a little bit further. So I'm gonna take these front pieces, get them out of the way, I'm gonna approach those separately. So when I'm approaching the back, it was just a little bit longer, but I still feel like it's a little bit too long for her lifestyle. When you're trying to decide and speaking with your client during the consultation on the length and type of extensions that you're doing, you wanna be sure that it's gonna fit their lifestyle, their jobs, and they're really gonna feel comfortable in what they're wearing. So with Mackenzie, I know she wants it to be just about mid back. So when I'm cutting my extensions, I like to use a feather razor. It's always gonna give me a quicker, faster end result for what I'm trying to achieve. Extensions are technically little bundles or chunks of hair, so if you cut them improperly, it's very easy to make them look fake. There's not one right or wrong way to cut extensions. It's how you can make it look the most natural with whatever tool you're using. So I prefer to use a razor. So when I'm doing my razor cut with the extensions, I'm gonna hold the hair nice and tight and I'm going to be cutting above my fingers. You wanna cut where there's the most tension. I'm gonna take my razor, put it at a slight angle, and I'm just going to stroke the hair until I get the desired length that me and my client talked about. And like I said, me and Mackenzie like it just about that mid back. So I'm taking off just a couple inches. We installed Dreamcatcher's 20 inch tape in hair. I am at about seven and a half bundles on Mackenzie. I think I had two sandwiches left over. So just going in, cutting above my fingers. The back in the nape area is always more dense. The back hairline drops through here. She has about two to three rows more in the back than what she does on the sides. So back here is always going to be more dense. So it's gonna take a little bit more time for you to get your end result when working in the back than it is gonna be on the sides. I like to get a little bit nitpicky. So I'm just gonna get these little guys. I'm just holding. As I see little areas that I don't like, I'm just grabbing them and I'm cutting them. When working with hair extensions, it's a very, very visual cut. If you don't like it, it's out of place, you can slightly trim it. The one thing you wanna remember is obviously you can't put it back. Well, you can, but it's gonna cost a little bit more. So you just wanna be very cautious. Take a step away, look at it. If you see it, then go in and refine what you're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and spin Mackenzie around, and I'm gonna work with a little bit of face framing. One more step, perfect. So when working with the face framing, you always wanna start it where her natural hair stops. So here's her natural, here's the extension. I need to create movement on the interior to make those two match together. You always want it to be very seamless, very blended. So I'm working on the edge, very vertical. You don't want to use a lot of, a lot of pressure and go in horizontal or else you're going to remove the weight you just put in. So I'm going to hold it here, light pressure. I'm just going to stroke down and feather that face framing in. This piece right here is laying a little bit heavy. So I'm going to choose that one and feather down. I'll always do this maybe two, three times until I get that feathery effect and it blends together. I'm now gonna do the same thing on this side. This is her heavier side, so I'm going to be doing a little bit more on this side than I did on her other side. This is her soft light side, heavy side, because she has that side part. So I'm gonna take this one, natural hair stops, and I start. Feather, 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 stroke, stroke. Do it till you like it. All right. So I'm gonna have you take a three quarters to where your shoulder's facing me. Right, one more little, there we go. So now since I took off the back, 
and I took off the front, there might still be a corner in the middle here. So right at this corner transition part, you always wanna double check that to see if there's a corner. So you take from center back and front area and combine the two. So as you see, there's just a little bit of a corner. Sometimes if you're taking off more length, it might be more dramatic. So just be cautious of that. So with this, I'm just going to take a slight transition and I'm gonna walk myself backwards, rounding off this corner. Ooh, that one wasn't good or wasn't too bad at all. Just got a little guy left right there. So I'm gonna do it one more time, taking off that piece. And now I'm gonna have you do a three quarter turn all the way to the other shoulder and right there. Let me go ahead and do it to this side. See my corners a little bit different on this side. Again, it's a visual cut. Take this. See if my corner's still there. I see that one little guy. Take him off. Okay, go ahead and face the mirror for me, Mackenzie. All right, so with Mackenzie, we know her hair is very short up here and now her length is down here. So I wanna create that movement on the interior to ensure it looks very natural and blended. So one way, we always like that rounded V kind of shape. So if you grab the hair and I pull it together, and I'm gonna do this row by row going down the head. I'm gonna take it here and I'm gonna slide on the side, slide on the side, and then I'll dip in the middle. When you're going through the middle, you are using your first two to three teeth. When you're on the edge, you can use the whole blade. One of the main reasons you want to do it in the middle, you can also do a little bit of a skipping motion through here, slightly fraying that cuticle of the extension because these are 100% human hair, so they do have full cuticle intact. The hair is gorgeous. Mackenzie, for being blonde, she actually has some pretty good hair, but you will still notice that her hair is a little bit more frizzy than the extensions would be. The extensions are Russian Scandinavian, so it's a European blend, and that cuticle is nice and smooth. So we like that, but again, you want it to look natural. So sometimes you're gonna have to fray the extensions just a little bit so the texture matches with her natural. So taking this next section, again, I'm gonna start right about in the middle. I'm gonna feather once or twice, feather once or twice, and then I'll go in, very light touches through the middle. Once or twice, once or twice, through the middle. You can take it very, very lightly, going just about horizontal, exactly the same as the extension. Don't tilt your razor one way or another, or else you could dig too much. Going directly flush, you can rub down, slightly fraying those beautiful smooth extensions. Kind of hurts your heart a little bit, but it blends really nicely with their natural hair. All right, I'm gonna go down about one more section. Get those guys out of the way. Taking my V. You can see that natural blend coming through because I used those four different colors on her. Corner edge, middle. Again, you can use anything you want when cutting the extensions. Just know why you're using it. So why would I use a feather razor? Why would I use a scissor? Neither one of them is right or wrong, whatever you can do to create your look. If you're using a scissor, you're gonna wanna use more of a slicing method going down the cuticle. Same thing with my razor, I'm always going down the cuticle, I'm never going up the cuticle. So I think that looks good. So I'm gonna take her hair down, I'm gonna look at it. Sometimes we can get real scissor happy, razor happy, and just keep cutting. You don't wanna take away everything you just did. So sometimes you need to take a step away and let the hair live going through there. So for me, I think I'm pretty much done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give her a couple of different styles, and then if I need to, I can nitpick on a couple more pieces.